It's a freestyle for the intro, look. Guys, welcome to the fucking channel. Hope you enjoy your stay. Got a camel toe, oh. Your girl does too, so we are even match. It was meant to be here, yeah. And that's facts, so. Watch the video, guys. And subscribe. I love you so much. From behind. Behind that mirror you look at with yourself with. You're so beautiful. Subscribe and watch and have my kids. What the? How's it going, guys? This is going to be a comprehensive video on all the video settings you need on Warzone to succeed. This is a PC. Uh, there's some tips on there for console players, but they're few and far between. So if you're on PC, stick around. This will help you, especially if you have a brand new rig. Um, I've spent the last month and a half trying to fine tune this. And so far, this is the best I have for y'all. And there's some nice uh, tips in here. So I would stick around, look through it, um, see if anything helps you because it definitely helped me. And I appreciate you guys for being here. Enjoy the video. So the first thing I suggest you do, come over here to your folder in, on Windows, go to Documents, go to your Modern Warfare folder, go to Players, and the um, Advanced Options file, which is a text file, just completely delete it. Then you can load up uh, Warzone. Then you load up Warzone, press play and all that. Then let the file be generated by uh, Warzone. You may need to do this uh, to get this to work. You may not. Um, it just depends on if you're willing to go through this extra step. I think it's worth it. Um, but your computer will configure how many physical cores uh, it thinks you need and how much uh, VRAM it's allocating for your game. Uh, a lot of people recommend you actually lower the VRAM as well. So I can show you that. Once the game's done booting up and everything, you get this advanced options folder, uh, which has been generated by Warzone. Uh, go into that. All right, so. I don't want all my VRAM to be used by this game. So what I'm gonna do is in the advanced options folder, I'm going to put that to about 0.65. Um, it's recommended you go between 0.5, 0.50, and 1 in the video memory scale. But try not to use uh, too much. You'll get stuttering and issues and all kinds of stuff. Um, and render a work account. This is what we're here for, right? I'm going to show you the results in a second. But as you can see, um, this is going to be the setting that you want to change. So think about this, all right? Uh, right click on Task Manager down here on this bar. Go to Performance. Click CPU. It should already be hovered on. And down here, the cores. Whatever that says, say mine's 12. That's the physical, physical cores in your CPU that uh, render everything, right? So uh, mine is already set to 12. You want to half that. So if you have six physical cores, according to Task Manager, put, it, put this number to three, right? And then you would go to save. Or say you have four, you would put it to two. Uh, so you save that. And then we're going to exit out of this. And I'll show you the results right now, right? So I got the videos in the background. I've tested uh, four games of the differences that this will make. So mm, these are the only settings... Set, this is the only setting I had changed, is the, um, the, the worker, the render worker count is the only setting I had changed in these four games, and you, you can see the difference in the FPS. Um, I had all 12 of my cores uh, in this game, and I was recording 137 FPS, it, boom, it bumps up to by 10 uh, when I half the cores to 6 in the setting I just showed you. So, uh, and there was also, I had a game with nothing else open, I wasn't recording. Um, there might have been some stuff open, but also I just know that I had my uh, FPS capped at 240, so max frame rate on both these games is 240. Uh, the frame times and just get a little more steady when I do it that way, but I could have gotten um, higher max frame rate, um, so I don't know what the average would have been. Could have been worse, could have been better. The lows probably would have been worse, um, but here I got almost a 30 FPS gain by halving the cores in that setting. So consistency is shown like that this will help you. Um, obviously these frames are way less because I was recording, but when I wasn't doing anything, I was getting pretty much... Most of the game, I was getting the amount of um, frames that my 240 years monitor needs to run the game smoothly. And honestly, like, that's a crazy experience um, gaming, but it's, like, I have a really good computer, so it's not, like, astonishing, but I have been playing at, like, 160 frames or less, and just to see that I can get up there is pretty cool. So, um, and we'll move on from that. Um, that section speaks for itself. In case you're wondering how the hell I even average 221 FPS, first of all, my PC costs a lot. It's a new PC. And it has a 5900X AMD Ryzen 9 series, 12-core, uh, 24 thread, overclock CPU and overclock GPU. Um, but I'll show you my in-game settings in case it were to help you, right? So 
Um, none of this stuff really matters, but I played it up, it'll be 103. If you lower that, you'll get more frames. I wouldn't go beneath 90 personally, but some people can play at 80. That's pretty much what console players are default, consoles defaulted to. So if that's more natural to you, you get more frames out of it. So be it, I like 103. A lot of pro players play around this range. I used to play on 90, which is nice. With the field of view, having a field of view, you'll be able to see more. And um, what I would recommend if you go play on like a field of view of 120, I would go down to independent ADS field of view so that you can zoom in farther. Um, you'll be able to see more if you do this. The reason why I use affected though, is because for one, my field of view is not maxed out. And for two, I find it awkward, like especially up close when um, I see all this around me and then all of a sudden my gun wants to zoom in super far and I'm, I have a close range gunfight. It just throws me off. Uh, so I like playing unaffected so that everything's consistent. My camera doesn't move uh, at all unless I have like a four times or higher scope. It's just for consistency, it helps me out. Um, brightness, I turn it up so I can see the dark skins everyone uses. Uh, I would play on, you can do this, colorblind type. This is for different colors. It's up to you. But mini map shape, do square, gets you 20% more um, mini map. And so let's go to graphics, right? So usually I play on full screen borderless and I've actually recorded, played games today where I was getting more frames on borderless. I don't know why, but um, when you run full screen and you're not streaming, that's how you get the most FPS. I run full screen borderless so I can interact with my other windows while I'm streaming generally. But these are all the stream, these are all the settings that I was um, recording with when I got my 221 FPS average on my 38 ETI um, 5900X rig. So uh, screen refresh rate, I keep it at 244, so that's what my monitor runs. So this might be the key on why I started averaging higher frames uh, because usually it's much lower I feel and with a res render resolution at 1080p of 100 you just I can't find a way to change the settings to average above 200 like 220 240 uh, fps so I changed the render resolution to 95 so it's still not super blurry but I still get extra frames from it um, I've seen people go down to 90 I played at it but you start having issues with certain gun fights like when they're in the top window mid-range or long range um, these things off custom frame rate limit Leave it unlimited. I'll show you a good way to limit it so that you can have way better frame times and frame rate average. The game does not do this well. Um, but if you were to use the custom limit, I wouldn't go anywhere under or above your frame that your monitor is set, right? So I put on unlimited. The best way to cap your frames in this game to get the best frame time and to even average a higher FPS at times, or at least up to the FPS of your monitor to match your monitor's hurt, uh, refresh rate in hertz, which would be 60, 120, 144, 165, 240, 360. Um, you want to match your FPS to whatever for your monitor is right so we'll go to msi afterburner download it google it download msi afterburner you come to your tray open up river tuna statistics then click add find the path to your modern warfare game so you go to file explorer and to find this you go to pc local disk program files times 86 in modern warfare click on that come up here copy the file and you would paste it down here click open and then click on modernwarfare.exe to add it to the list application detection level change it from low to medium and change the frame rate limit right here to 240 and this will be the best way to set a frame rate cap on modern warfare disable video highlight enable, enable, enable plus boost for me for low latency uh, reflex that will use up your gpu power so if you're already maxed out 99 of your gpu just throw it on enabled and your cpu will um, help you with the lower latency right so gpu boost right here enable plus boost um, you may need to do restart shaders, installation occasionally if you're starting getting crashes or weird stuff happening. Maybe that's something you can look into. Leave the gamma the same. Streaming quality is up to you. I was playing on low for the 221, but medium, you can see farther distances and stuff. Buildings will render um, in the distance if you're sniping, uh, which could help you a lot. But then just overall look of the game will look better on normal. I like playing on low for frames. Texture resolution, normal. Uh, you can play on low and get extra frames. And texture filter, high. Particle quality, high. Um, I was playing, these are the same settings, I'm, like I said, you'd think I'd have to go lower, but no, I'm still getting good frames with these. Um, I put this bullet impact and sprays on just so I can see if bullets hit the wall, I know the direction of the shots, because sometimes it gets confusing which way the bullets are coming from in the heat of the, uh, of the of battle or whatever. So Tessellation, you can turn this on if you want to both. Um, it'll just show like the rocks in the ground will be like more jagged and stuff. And in theory, I have a thought that this may help you in certain situations where it looks like something is, like you can shoot through a texture because you can see the corner of their body, but you're just hitting the, the surface. This may be to do a setting like this because you kind of flattens out those um, extra textures, but at the same time disabling it, you'll see more. So it's uh, whatever you want, but disabled for me. Uh, I was using this setting with high resolution, high texture pack resolution and turning on texture streaming and caching, which was getting me good frames earlier, but I would crash literally every game. So, and also I've, I've watched a video where the guy thinks that it doesn't help and it can actually hurt your frames because um, Warzone is a CPU intensive game. And as such, um, this will hurt your frames um, in the long run. So I uh, now I have it turned off. Um, I don't crash anymore now that I did that. And shadow resolution, uh, I put it to normal just to help you uh, be able to see through shadows a little easier. Makes it a little less fuzzy. Same with particle lighting on normal. You can turn that to low for extra frames though. Uh, as I said, cache 
uh, sun and spot shadows disable both of them. Particle, normal, like I said, ray tracing off. That'll hit your frames hard. Ambient occlusion off. Um, I used to run it on. It kind of makes stuff look a little better, I believe, but I think it honestly makes things harder to see. Like more shadows intersecting each other just doesn't sound like it'll help you and when i use it i struggle to see yeah, like rose skins and stuff i haven't had that problem lately so i, I suspect it may be to do maybe ambient occlusion or similar graphic settings that i used to have on that i no longer have on so make reflection put it to low um so you can see like reflections a little better it's not all disgusting but um if you want more frames turn it off of course i'm going to zero there's, a, there's instances where you can turn this to one and actually make the game look way better and that's um if your anti aliasing is off or as they say if, if you don't have filmic or smma smaa t2x um but really I just, when I play, it's like, it just adds extra blur. And so does NAAsing in general. But if you want a smooth look at experience, um, put SMAA1X. It does add extra blur, but it's smooth, right? So when I had this on earlier, I feel like I was popping off getting kills. Everything felt good. I only had like 140, 150 frames on my 20, 240 hertz monitor, but I was getting, I had like an 8 kill game with this earlier. But then, like, I'm noticing blur from farther away, so I ended up turning it off. Just because it's, um, everything just is not as blurry with it off, is all I'm going to say. So, um, but you can turn it on if you want. Um, at the end, it'll hurt your frames to turn it on, but not too much. And depth of field, all this motion blur off, because otherwise you're insane, boom, green off, green off. Dynamic resolution does not work. And honestly, DLSS does not work as good as they intended it to, uh, especially depending on your GPU. If you have like a 2070 Super, like my old PC, you might see like 30 extra FPS. So I would um, I would definitely mess around with that. Like if you have a 4040p monitor, you could use balancer quality and see if that helps your frames. I'm going to go above that because it just gets harder to see stuff. Um, although if you really want to try these out, instead of doing something like render resolution 66 or something nutty, you can try turning up the DLSS. Of course, you have to have a newer GPU for that to even work at all. Um, but yeah, those are the settings I'm running right now. That got me um, 240 average FPS for half the game, which is um, the smoothest gaming experience you can get on Warzone. It's totally optimized. There's only so much you can do. Um, and just while we're in the options, boost high will help you hear things. Master volume 100, effects volume 100, turn everything else down. And... All right, so I'll try to go over some other settings you can do real quick. Let's go to game mode settings, turn on game mode. So copy and paste this code, press enter. I think we have it added. But the ultimate performance, as you can see here, power saver option has been added to your power saving settings. Power. Just go to choose a power plan. Power options, right? And right here, you want to go to choose ultimate performance and save that. I already have it checked, but um, that's something you can do there. And while we're here, so link below, but Google ICLC program. Go to this website. Download this. Extract it to a new folder. On the ICLC. Then downloads, but I would suggest putting it like desktop or something. And now we go to that folder and downloads, find what we just downloaded. Go to the folder. For me, I already have it, so it's kind of being weird. But let's just extract. Never mind. You can extract that, but I already have it. So I'm just going to go to my folder and go to Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. Okay, make sure this is set to 1024 megabytes. And the free memory, if you have 32 gigs of RAM like I do, you would send it to 1600. And if you have uh 1600 gigs you would have that to 8000 and 4000 if you have 8 gigs right it's actually a little higher um than those values so you're gonna have to google what half of 16 gigs is but and then put that in there for me like i said just gonna undo that and put it back to my value wanted time resolution it's at one but you set it to 0.5 check this box if you have a low-end computer put the uh, pulling rate to 1000 if you have a high-end put it to 500 and then you start it towards the standby list and just leave it running. That will optimize your RAM. Okay, this next, these next things are a little more advanced, and I would be careful doing these because you could break your computer. If anything happens, it's not my fault. Skip the section if you don't want any of this, but if you do download MSI Burner, right, and have a 3080 Ti, so this will be different for you, but with a 3080 Ti, what you can do is go to this voltage curve editor and drag one of these lower values up, right, so like 1920, and then apply it over here. And what this will do is it'll change the whole entire curve of your um, frequency and your GPU. So when you're playing the game, it'll ramp up to like, uh, for me, it's like 1995 for the whole time I'm playing, and which is way higher of an overclock than you can get fiddling with this core clock um, and way more stable as well, because what's happening is you're actually lowering the voltage. At a lower voltage, you want it to overclock higher. So you're not giving the graphics card more power. You're taking away power and telling it to work harder. So what that does is it'll give you more performance without overheating your graphics card and causing crashes um, over uh, like throttling it and making it come back down and just all the bad stuff that comes with bad overclocks. Um, but I also up the power limit and if you can't handle the noise, don't do it, but I put the fan speed to 100 in case I have a bad overclock because I'm too lazy to test it. I actually did the same thing with my CPU fans. I have nine of them all at 100% speed because I overclocked my CPU, CPU using um, 
uh, PBO and Curve Optimizer, which is new. Uh, it's not new to Ryzen, um, the new series of Ryzen, Ryzen 9 5900X, 5950X, and 5600X, 5800X as well. But PBO2 has big upgrades for uh, if you're overclocking, it's way better than a manual clock for gaming. And I can even show you in my um, core temp program that opened the wrong thing. So over here, you can see that while I'm doing things, this overclock is both manually overclocking and single core overclocking. So for single core overclocks, some of these cores will get up to like 5100 megahertz and it, that program will run just like beastly. But for games that are using more threat, more cores, I mean, um, like Warzone, all my cores instead of 3700 megahertz are now overclocked to like 48, 4900 megahertz with my current overclock. And it's stable. I've been running this for a month and a month and a half and no crashes at all. So um, that's thanks to my fans keeping my CPU temps down because my old computer would not be able to run this overclock. Um, but I'll let you figure that out. You have to Google and look at guides for um, using the PBO, uh, which is the just an optimizer that lets you overclock that AMD has in our BIOS settings when you start the computer and um, using the curve optimizer. So other than that, what I also recommend is opening up the ports in your router, you would just figure out what the um, default IP is for your router. It's usually like this or 192.168.0.1, I mean 1.1, one, not 0, 1. And then you would proceed and look up a guide for port forwarding. You can do this for your PS4, your PS5, your Xboxes, or your PC. Uh, just um, port forward the ports you use to game onto that system that you're using to play it on. And you'll get an open NAT type or at least a modern NAT type instead of a strict, which will allow you to host games, connect to more people, just make your experience way better. In the past, I've seen that in 2K19, 2K18, 2K20, 2K21, all, like all these NBA games, um, I wouldn't load in the parks and players would load so slow until I port forwarded the game. So, and for um, like say Black Ops 2, all these other games I've played in the past, it just allows you to host uh, Warcraft 2, like literally any game you can think of, it just helps. So that's something you want to think about when you're trying to host games in Warzone or connect to people. If you have a modern NAT type, they have a strict NAT type, half the time you won't be able to connect to each other uh, or they may be able to connect to you. You can't connect to them or you can't hear each other in game chat through the mics. There's a lot of weird stuff that happens when you don't um, port forward. So look into that. Mostly it helps you for hosting. If you like hosting private matches, private matches and stuff like that. Or you play games with dedicated servers and not, um, or without dedicated servers and you're the host. Uh, okay. There's a lot of things I could go over, but, oh, okay. So this one may help you. I can't confirm it, but just to show you the rest of my settings, you would go to Battle.net and go to Game Settings, and click Additional, Command Line Arguments, type in D3, D11. That'll change your direct conversion to 11 instead of 12, which is what Horizon was built on, which may help you, may not. And off of that, I can also show you something else, right? So, Modern Warfare right here. Everyone needs to do this, right? Compatibility, run this program as admit, apply, okay, and you're off to the races. But if your computer also sucks, disable full screen optimization, change high DPI settings, override high DPI scaling behavior, okay, apply, okay, play the game. Um, this will help a lot of people out with bad systems. Um, but I believe this is no longer a necessity if you're running the DirectX 12, I think it was more of a DirectX 11 thing, or an old Windows problem, I can't remember the explanation. But if you have any issues, you can try to see if that helps. All right, this might be last but not least, unless I can think of some other things. Oh, wait, no, first of all, download, let's see, uh, disk defrag. Type that in and analyze your drives, optimize them, especially if it's a hard disk drive because uh, they definitely have fragmentation issues and they can put up with defragmentation much better than solid state drives. Like you may eventually ruin your drive, your SSD, if you're defragmenting it. But I would do this anyway. Optimize your drives. Okay. Okay. Type in advanced system settings. Go to performance and advanced tab. Go to settings. And I would do adjust for best performance. I'm going to take up all these extra effects on your windows and just make things better. You could look into the advanced tab and try changing the paging size file if your computer is really bad, but I would look into that more um, and maybe allocate more for that. But I wouldn't recommend it for most people because it takes extra storage from your hard disk drive, which will be really slow. And it'll use it as like a makeshift for RAM and it has to move it between your RAM and your hard disk. And it'll be really slow for your FPS. It might even ruin it. But if you absolutely have no VRAM and you can't play the game, this may be something you want to look into. Okay. But yeah, just for best performance, click OK. Uh, make sure your drivers are updated. I'm not trying to go through all this, but the main driver you need to worry about would be your NVIDIA settings. And then click NVIDIA GeForce Experience, actually. Sign in, go to drivers, check for updates. There's generally going to be an update if you don't constantly update this, but the last one was on the 19th, not that long ago. And then you want to 
download the new driver update. This is a huge one for uh, gaming in general. Make sure your GPU um, drivers are updated. Okay. Other settings. So um, this is more of uh, just a look at the game type of thing. But today I've been playing on a higher digital vibrance of between 65 to 70. It makes things more colorful in Warzone. Um, and from what I know, it doesn't seem to add a performance hit, which is nice. So I'm going to just keep rocking with that for now. The problem you may run into, though, if you change digital vibrance, is colors may bleed together. Um, but it shouldn't affect the game too much of Warzone because there's not very many colors to begin with. And, okay, make sure your refresh rate is the highest. I don't know who may have that issue, but if you do, there you go. Also, you can try changing your resolution down if you're getting bad FPS, but uh, other than that, I would go to minus 3D settings, turn sharpening off. Um, if you were to use sharpening, I would do it from here. Go to, like, 87, turn off film grain, press OK, and it'll sharpen your game um, with a lower frame drop hit than using, like, Alt F3 in Warzone and using filters. Those really kill your frames. But in general, I would turn this off for more FPS. And then come down here, right? Turn on low. No, no, don't don't mess with the low latency mode. Okay. Um, come down here. Turn power management mode to prefer maximum performance. And then this is more important. Turn texture filtering quality to high performance. And then make sure your shader cache is on. And then also make sure you use use the advanced three image settings in this tab. Adjust image settings with preview. And I'll make sure the three settings we just used will work. So. You also want to change the program settings just to be concise. You can do that. Put a high performance right there on quality and power management mode for maximum performance. And sharpening off. So this might wrap up the video. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Turn off scaling. Put no scaling instead of aspect ratio. Again, make sure your refresh rate is correctly set up. So as far as I can think of, um, that's how I got the 221 FPS average in that game. Um, without streaming, of course, I still need to change my OBS settings. To try to get more frames while I'm recording and streaming because it takes such a drastic hit, which shouldn't be the case. And the main thing takeaway I would take from this video is if you can safely um, overclock your GPU and CPU, if you figure out how to do that without breaking anything, if you have good cooling, do that. Because what happens in this game is, at least for me right now, um, my GPU and CPU utilization don't even come anywhere near 100%, neither of them. And the higher frequency on the GPU and CPU just gives me more frames, right? And that's all there is to it, um, hiring the frequencies are what really help my frames and of course that i have a really good computer um but this will still help you if you have like a 2070 super like i used to have use the lss man um it helps a lot so also i would suggest either using a different game if you're gonna play 1080p 360 hertz 240 hertz monitors or if you're gonna play warzone get a 1440p 4k monitor and you'll have the most success with 30 dti it's not worth getting it if you have a 1080 ti trust me it's so underwhelming the game's so unoptimized, unoptimized, and it's hard to find sources on how to get higher frames to actually help you. Um, I heard in Fortnite you can get like 800 FPS with this GPU, but for games like this that are CPU bound and unoptimized, uh, good luck. That's all I gotta say. Things you can help um, if you're gonna, I can help you if you're trying to actually, you know, do some monitoring or um, overclocking are gonna be these apps right here. I love Core Temp for CPU overclocking. It'll show you the temperatures, it'll show you the frequencies of your cores. Um, tech power up GPU Z, that's good for your GPU to monitor what's going on. CPU Z, give you extra information when you're overclocking and such, or when you're changing the RAM timings and stuff. By the way, make sure you enable your XMP profile on your computer. It's pretty common, especially if you configure your computer, to have that turned off right. So turn on your XMP, Google how to do it, trust me. You'll get more frames um, off of that. And other than that, guys, um, what I would say is the last thing. If you notice in my gameplay that will be filling throughout this, is that if I had 16 games, gigs of RAM on Warzone, I would be maxed out right now. Because look how many megabytes I'm using just to run the game. Um, I would suggest using 32 gigabytes of RAM. Using 32 gigabytes of RAM, I have a video on it, I'll put it at the end of the video. And I had um, 32 gigabytes of RAM instead of 16 gigs and higher frequency of 4,000 megahertz. I was getting like 30 to 70 extra FPS just from that. So if you can buy an extra stick of RAM, you can figure it in dual channel properly. Um, and if it's your motherboard, look into all these things. Um, I would do that because going from 16 to 32 helps so much, especially if you're a content creator and you record, it's, you'll get stuttering and all kinds of dumb shit if you're using 16. So if you don't want to deal with that, just upgrade your stick. It doesn't cost an insane amount. It's better than just, you know, splurging $3,000 on a brand new computer like my dumb ass did. So um, that's it for the video, guys. Let's finally wrap this thing up. Uh, 
I don't know how I'm going to cut this down. I think I'm just going to speed it up and you guys can figure out the rest. Uh, but if, you, if this helps you at all, leave a like, subscribe. I'll go into more detail and make new settings videos. If I see if you guys like this, this is something I like doing. I like getting my best, the best game I can get, which is helping me play better. Um, getting, you know, smoother experience, helping me find the balance of graphics, the performance. It's such a delicate thing. It's so easy to fuck up on PC where there's so many things to change. Um, but hopefully some of these things help you guys. And peace out.